in this episode, we'll be tapping into the roots of our potentials with the help of a business psychologist, a master certified coach, founder, and the CEO of Strategy Meets Performance, and the author of a book titled, A Powerful Culture Starts With You. Welcome to the show, Sharizad. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode for a soulful conversation. I'm so delighted that you are, you know, with us here today because there's so much I want to learn from your, your new book, which is um, a powerful culture that starts with us and also from the works that you've done. Um, over the past years, you've been named Trailblazer of the Year, you've been named Citizen of the Year, you've been named A Voice to Listen to for driving positive changes in our communities or in your community, basically. <laughs> so um, what inspired you to do all the works that you did in order to get to where you are today? Well, one of the things that I believe in is we all have the power to be change agents. And that mm -hmm. is something that I inspire among my clients who want to drive change, whether it's at work or in their communities. And it's something that I personally have done over time. And in my community, I worked really closely with a group of concerned citizens and neighbors. And we worked with the government and the community to drive positive change towards safety and providing safe passages where we are that people could cross the road without getting hurt or killed. And I had a vision for it and I dro drove toward that vision for many years. And in 2018, we did get that safety. So I think it's really important to have a vision and be a change agent and gather people around you who also believe in that vision. And the same goes for work and at home and in our community. Yes. I love what you talked about, you know, being a change agent. And that's why all of us talk about your book, which is a powerful culture starts with you. We being, you know, the change agents that we need to create that powerful culture in our society and also in our companies and in the world at, at large. Um, so in your, in your book, you provide us with, you know, this leadership guide that helps us or shows us how to shape culture. So I don't want us, I don't want to like describe the old book to the um, listeners. I want you, the author yourself to tell us more about the book. Sure. Yeah. Over the years, as I've worked with companies on strengthening their culture and leadership, the CEOs would tell me, I know what a good culture looks and feels like but tell me what to do. And I thought it was just a wonderful ask because people who are busy and moving fast yet want results want to know how to get there quickly. So I made my book a really practical guide on how to create a great workplace culture. And it's a mixture of research and real life examples and things to do. And there's three main areas. The first one, and they're all acronyms, the first one is watch it. And this is a tool for how to look at your culture with a fresh set of eyes. The second part is drive it. And it's a coaching tool where you have on one page, two sides, coaching questions to help anyone discover where they're stuck and how they could move and create change. And the third one, walk it, is a senior team alignment model. And it helps people in senior teams, see how they're getting along, where they're stuck, and how to move forward. So it's three steps, and uh, people who've read it or listened to it on Audible have told me it's very practical. They had steps that they could take, and they appreciated that. And these tools could be found for free on my book's website, which is called apowerfulculture.com powerfulculture.com we'll place a link to this website in the show notes of this episode so anyone who's interested could read more about this three step watch it drive it walk it um are the three steps and they are you know acronyms basically and you could find out more about this um on the website too that's awesome thank you so much for, for sharing that well if, if you could just give us you know a glimpse or a little explanation on these three steps like how would you describe them can you walk us through these three steps briefly Yes. So please, can you walk us through um, the three models that you use, you know, in the acronyms? Sure. 
And so the first model, Watch It, is all about learning about your culture with a fresh set of eyes, whether you've had your company for a few years or a few decades. There are ways that you can look at it in a new way and watch it has some steps, including walking around and speaking with people, being really curious and exploring and asking questions, making sure as you take in the feedback that you ask follow-up questions. And the H is very important. This is about handling your ego because it is not always easy to hear about recommendations that people have, especially if it's an area you've been working on. And so in the book, I talk about ways to make sure you are staying centered and being really open to feedback because that could be a huge game changer. And then once you have gathered information, how to inspire a new plan and make being a lifelong learner a new habit and pattern. And I also have, when you go on a powerfulculture.com, four different checklists that you can, four different checklists that you can download. Mm -hmm. One is about the physical environment. One is about the communication from the top. One is about the team dynamics. And one is about the employee experience. And so what you can do with these tools is take one at a time and have several people also download the form and there's different areas to look at. And basically as you fill it out, you give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. And the things that you give a thumbs down, you can have a couple suggestions or ask people their thoughts. And then several people come back together and they review, for example, the one about communication from the top, they review it together. What messages did they see coming from the top leaders? Were they were there enough messages? Were they inspiring? Were they sterile? Were they cold? You know, did it include um, feedback from customers? You know, and so it really helps take a good look at what is happening and what could be changed. And so everyone has the same tool to look at the same things and then come back together and see what are some changes we need to make. So that's the watch it model. Mm-hmm. Any questions on that one? Yes, I have a short question, like, you know, inspiring a new plan. So um, when you talk about inspiring a new plan, um, what do we have to put into consideration when we want to create an, a new plan, for example? Great question. Thank you. So let's say you have um, asked around and one of the challenges that you have seen are some complaints from customers around the quality, around timeliness, around customer service. And when you hear it from multiple people, this is probably a trend. And so inspire a new plan. This is an action learning approach where you talk to some people who are facing the customers and you say, here's a plan that we thought we could have for communicating with them. What do you think? So the first thing is to get input and buy in. Mm. And then once you have it and you're starting that new plan, to measure the metrics before and after to make sure that this is something that's working. And if it's not, and you, you know, try it for a month and then you come back and you say what worked, what didn't you revise it again and Mm -hmm. you try again. So action learning is this continuous loop of seeking feedback, trying something new, seeking feedback, incorporating the new, trying it again. And you do that multiple times. And then you start getting to a place of very strong impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love what you said, you know, um, try something new, get feedback, put that feedback into your system, try to improve and you move on that way. And that way you, you're able to create a, a new plan all the time or you're, you, you're inspired to have new plans or new strategies to move on for your business or for your life. And, you know, when you talk about um, take charge of growing yourself and your culture, I understood a bit of, you know, yes, I want us to be responsible for growing is ourself. When you talk about culture, like in your opinion and in your, which from your expertise, how will you describe our culture? <coughs> oh, bless you. Thank you very much. Um, culture is how things are done. It's how people behave when no one is watching. Culture is, if you think of the iceberg that is so big above the water, 
it's so much bigger underneath the water. It's how we make decisions. It's how we bring people on. It's how we reward them. It's how we exit them if we exit them. Mm -hmm. It's how people are behaving and getting the results. And when you want to shift a culture, first you need to understand it. And I always have a culture assessment where I interview a handful, a couple handfuls of formal and informal leaders to learn about what's going really well. What are the great habits that are bringing success? And what are some areas where the company's not successful? And let's try to understand why and then come up with a new plan. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Wow, thank you so much for that. So now, now that we've come up with a new plan and we know what our culture is, knowing what is underneath the iceberg, for example, how can we then drive it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you get me. So you have this <laughs> new plan and you want to help support everyone in living up to it. And the drive it model, I created this taking the steps that I know are important for creating um, curiosity in someone, creating potential action. And I, you know, I've had years of training and experience as a coach. And um, the reason I made it this way is the, this is the way that people think. So one, let's just acknowledge D is determine the challenge. What exactly is the challenge at hand? We may think it's one thing, but it's really something else. And a good coach will ask you questions around that. Like, what is it that's bothering you? How is it showing up? How would you like things to be different? And the R, reflecting, uh, reflect on what making this change would mean to you. This is a chance to dream for a moment that this challenge, whether it's a, a conflict with another cross-functional leader, whether it's not being able to get your people motivated, reflect on if you could, what would it look like? And mm. I give different exercises where people could dream and imagine um, that everything is going really well. I asked them what's happening and he's, the person will say, they're smiling, they're sending me happy texts with nice emojis, they are <laughs> um, getting positive feedback from the customers. Mm -hmm. And so you have to imagine this final outcome and have this vision for it so that you know what you're working toward and you can talk about it with your people. So that's the reflect on what making this change would mean to me is, is just imagining and being excited about it. Invite a new way of thinking, that's the eye of drive it, is all about examining our assumptions. Because we may have always done things a certain way and we don't even realize that. Um, the V is valiantly get out of your comfort zone. Mm. And oftentimes, Toby, the thing that we're scared of the most is yeah. the area we need to grow the most. <laughs> and True. and I Carl Jung said it, Sigmund Freud said it. I really believe it and there are things that hold us back and if we are able to explore it or take tiny steps toward it, it could be a big difference. Mm -hmm. I can give you an example of myself. I was just so uncomfortable for all my years up until 2023 to be on camera. And I decided this year that I have a lot to share. And as you know, I'm a writer, so I do it through that medium. But a lot of people, and I do it through speaking, but a lot of people said, you should make videos. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my God, the technology. And I don't even know if I like how I look. All of these barriers I had to come through that I had to overcome. And then I started doing it and I'm discovering a whole new side of myself where you get to be creative, um, right? Creating the message, making the video, editing the video, um, finding different ways to gain new subscribers. And so if you think of it as a magic zone out there, if you think of something that really scares you rather than think about oh, I'm, I'm so scared and I don't want to get out of my comfort zone. Think of getting into a magic zone mm. and who you could be. You'll discover new parts of yourself. That's true. Um, and the E for engaged support, 
is there are times where we need support from others. And I use the word handholding in a positive way. Typically in American workplace culture, they'll say, people will say, oh, he needs so much handholding. And it's in a negative way. But if we think of someone who is doing something new or is new to the company and they're being onboarded, handholding could mean just for a little while helping someone out until they become good at something and then letting them thrive and then they'll hold other people's hands. Mm -hmm. So engaged support is one that's really important. And then for every new thing you do, you start with one tiny little step. So I always ask my client, what's one step you could take toward that goal? Mm -hmm. And then the last one, transform your thinking to prepare for challenges. Is that every time we get something that we dreamed of and you know, move to that new house, get that promotion, start that company, get a new set of employees. It's what you dreamed of, but guess what? With every new growth comes a new challenge. And so we have to know that because when you do, you could remind yourself, oh, this is supposed to be hard at this moment. That's okay. Mm -hmm rather than being so hard on yourself. So th those are the steps of drive it and why I created it in that order. Yeah. Oh, that's so brilliant. I mean, when you talked about um, comfort zone, I was like, yeah, of course, a lot of us want to just stay in our comfort zone where we, you know, we know what is happening there. We, we are used to the routines. We're used to the old um function of it all but we have to move from the comfort zone to the magic zone and that could involve also a lot of challenges like you've you, you described also at the end like taking those baby steps first steps from our comfort zone out into the magic zone and then you know improving ourselves that way expanding our horizons and preparing for the challenges that could come with growth basically on its own i, I really appreciate that thank you so much for sharing that yeah, yeah, and sometimes clients will say, well, what if I don't do that? Mm. You know, what if I don't go out of my comfort zone? I, and I say, you don't have to do anything, yet you shared with me your dreams. You shared with me you want to expand your skills, you want to expand your network, you want to create a side business, and, and I'll share back with them the excitement I saw mm. when you described these things. When you yeah. imagine having them mm. really was beautiful. And mm. so if that is what you want, there are some things that may be a little bit uncomfortable on the path, but rest and comfort knowing what's on the other side could be brilliant. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. I, when you when you were describing this right now, what came to my mind was basically, you know, in this day and age, we notice our companies are becoming much more diverse and much more inclusive and much more you know, fighting for towards equity, basically. And a lot of people, a lot of traditional companies, you know, want to stay back in that comfort zone of, you know, we're a traditional company. This is our standard. This is how we, we work. How would you encourage leaders of such companies to step out of their comfort zone to em embrace more diversity, more inclusion and more equity? Oh, wonderful question. Thank you, Toby. So, so people have different understandings of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Some people fully understand it and they're willing to take the time to create the transformations to get the company there. And some people are, they understand a little bit, but they're curious. So the first thing I would say is explore that curiosity. If you meet someone who works on DEI or recommends a book for you on diversity, equity, inclusion, that's a great place to start is just to start reading and learning a little bit more. I recently read this book, Anti-Racist Leadership, mm -hmm. and How to Transform Corporate Culture in a Race-Conscious World. And this book was written by someone who ran Jamba Juice for a long time. And he actually, by really focusing on DEI made the company so much more successful. And he talks about what it looks like to hire more diversely, why it's important, because when you do and you create an environment which is inclusive, you really want to hear all your voices, you're going to make better decisions. Mm. Teams that are 
more diverse, don't get along as well. But guess <laughs> what? What? They have better outcomes. And it's been shown in research. And of course, we love it when we hang out with friends and colleagues who are just like us. We feel seen. We feel like, oh, this is so easy. This is so great. But when you have such a homogenous group where you're all very similar in background and experience and outlook, you're going to miss things. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss what can make your company even stronger and appeal to a bigger, broader group of people. So diversity is bringing on people with different backgrounds. And it's not just about gender or race. It's about where the people have gone to school, what industries they've worked in, um, what viewpoints they have on co corporate culture. And so that's one part of it. But then once you bring them in, inclusion is making sure you create the space to hear from everyone. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people could bring in a diverse set of backgrounds, but then everyone is expected to behave in the same way. That's not really inclusion or belonging. That's not valuing someone's authenticity and their vulnerability and their real selves. So it's an art to create an environment where you are expecting people to share their thoughts. You send everything in an, in an agenda beforehand so they could think about it and come prepared. And you go around the room and ask each person versus just saying, what do you all think? <laughs> and, and it's if you hear someone say something that's a microaggression, which is when someone knowingly or unknowingly makes a comment that is unkind to a person's background or character. And oftentimes we don't say anything. And in a organization where you want to be inclusive, if someone says something that's offensive, A, you should create an environment where someone could speak up and B, to talk to that person and to say, you know, that comment that you made about fill in the blank, um, women, people of color, whatever it might have been, immigrants, you know, that was hurtful. And if you mm -hmm. could please refrain from doing that, that would be great. And so oftentimes people have never been given this feedback and some cultures really encourage it. And so we have to approach people with grace when we're having these conversations and not see them as a bad person and not cancel them, but give them a chance and have them understand the impact of their language and their words mm. so that they transform it into more inclusive language. Now, if you do that multiple times and the person keeps doing that, that's a different conversation. But I always believe in starting with pos a lens of positive intent and helping create awareness to the person as a first step. Yes, creating awareness is very important. That's true. Wow. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. I mean, now we've, we've, we know how to watch it. We know how to drive it. Can you tell us how to walk it? So walk it is when the senior team in the best case scenario is completely aligned on the vision, the strategy, the values, and is driving in the same direction together. And you ask any member of the executive team what the plan is and what the changes are. They will all say the same thing. They all back each other up. Mm. And when you operate in this way, it's really, really soothing for people's nervous systems because they know their leaders are walking the talk. Mm. And we do not see that enough where our leaders say one thing and they do that one thing. And um, oftentimes when I have culture assessments, people will point that out. They'll say, you know, they told us to do this one thing and they're doing the opposite and it's so disengaging. And so when you're working with the senior team, you want to make sure you're walking the talk. You want to make sure you're all supporting each other. That's being aligned. Look at your culture, which is like the watch it, know a plan, be very clear on the plan. So I always recommend a strategy on a page where the vision, the strategy, the values, everything is on there. And it's simple and clear and to the point. And it's made to share 
with everyone in the organization, including frontline employees. They are the ones who are seeing your customers. They're the ones making the end product. And if they, if there's a big population of employees who speak a different language, make it in that language as well so that you are ensuring comprehension of your strategy. Yes, yes. Let everyone understand the strategy in their own language. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So how do you then, you know, track everything? Like, you know, once you've set those strategies into place, you've engaged everyone, we are all aligned, we know this is what we want to do. Everyone knows, everyone's on the same page, basically. How do, do we then track our progress, track, you know, the growth of our community or culture? Yeah. So for example, on your strategy, if you have three to five key strategies and the metrics for them and the time long, and we always talk about smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, tied to a timetable. When you're very clear on your strategy and what you are all going to be accountable for each month, each quarter, each year, you can measure that. When you are clear on the values and the behaviors you want, and I would recommend four to five maximum values, then you are bringing people on using those values, promoting them using those values, offboarding them using those values. And you could track that by how you are doing the recruiting and the promotions and the onboarding. And it's something that could be in your talent management system and your human resources team can support that and help with mm -hmm. with that and and it's pretty easy to track once you've gotten it integrated into the system yes yes well thank you so much i really appreciate you know you working us through these three models and i know with this we'll be able to create that culture that we need in our you know for our business and even there are a lot of things here that we could also use for our own personal goals and our own personal you know um life also when when we want to do anything or achieve any kind of height of greatness even when we want to reach the roots of our potentials also we need all of this also to to ensure that we we get there and uh, just one, one more question you know you, you also help people with emotional intelligence i just would love to know the place of emo emotional intelligence when it comes to our culture and our company and the the company culture also yeah so i see culture as a living organism and we have to water it and feed it and take care of it every single day. And part of how part of how we build culture is how we respond to things that happen, whether it's a last minute customers wanting something, whether it's a crisis, whether it's an employee issue. And emotional intelligence is staying rooted and calm when all of these unexpected things happen. Mm. And we role model how to show up when we decide we're going to be mindful and centered and tap into our emotional intelligence. So it's a lifelong's work because some people have very um, reactive styles in their emotions that they've learned from nature and nurture. And um, when we want to change that, neuroplasticity is about how we could rewire our brains to show up differently when we feel that stress or that anxiety. And that's where we create new habits and then we become more emotionally intelligent, which makes us better leaders when people don't see us freaking out or getting angry or behaving in a negative way, then it's a much more engaging leadership style. So I highly recommend work on our emotional intelligence, to do uh, reading around mindfulness and have mindfulness practice. And one of the things I always talk about, and that's why I have um, a book, my uh, tree for my book cover mm -hmm. is one, culture's a living organism. And two, how do we stay rooted and growing? Mm -hmm. And so as we do that, as our organizations grow, we need to grow alongside with it. As new generations come into the workplace who we may not understand, we need to learn and grow so that we can keep up with the changes that are happening. Yes, that's true. We have to keep up with the changes that are happening and we have to stay rooted so that we don't get uprooted on the road, you know, on the path of, of growth also. Exactly. 
Yeah, yeah. And you know, your, your book also encourages us that um, we have to be the, the change that we want to see in the world because, you know, you said a powerful culture starts with us. So if you could just tell us one thing that we have to do in order to be the change that we could be, that we want to see in the world, what would be that one thing be? Yeah. So when you notice something that could be different, whether it's at home, in your communication dynamic with a family member, whether it's at work with a colleague, whether it's a problem in your community that's driving you crazy like mine was, you have to ask yourself, if not me, then who? Mm. Because what we often do is sit around and wait. We wait for others to solve the problem. We, we wait for our family members to be different, yet we're not being different. We wait for our colleagues to come and resolve the conflict. We hope someone else is going to resolve that problem in the community. And at the end of the day, it starts with you. You have to decide, if not me, then who? Mm -hmm. That's it. And it's a little bit scary. But mostly, guess what? It's empowering because you're using your voice and your agency. You're not waiting for others to do it. And that's where the magic happens. Yes, that's where the magic happens. If not me, then woo. Yeah. Then <laughs> woo. Wow. Charizard, I really appreciate this so much. Um, for people out there, we still have more questions. We still want to get across to you to get the book, especially. It's available on Amazon. Your web, the link to your website will be in the show notes of this episode. They also put links that one could check out and also read samples of the book and all of that. But from you, um, what's the best way to contact you? What's the best way to work with you? What's the best way to reach out to you? And what's your most preferable way of us getting the book also? Sure. Um, probably the easiest way would be by email. And that's Sharzad, S-H-A-H-R-Z-A-D, Sharzad, at strategy meets performance.com hmm. yes and that is the easy. website strategy meets performance.com hmm. the book is a powerful culture starts with you and dr sharzad naravi on instagram and youtube so i would love to meet people wherever they are most comfortable Awesome. I'm going to place all of this link in the show notes of this episode. So I encourage everyone out there, if you love watching YouTube videos, perfect place for you to get awesome videos about learning more about the powerful culture that, that starts with within you. If you want to just follow on Instagram, then follow on Instagram. But please get the book also. Visit the website and you find all relevant, all important links also to all the platforms. Thank you so much, Charizard. I really appreciate this. It was awesome learning from you and awesome speaking with you too. Such a pleasure. Thank you, Toby.